Hello, AlgaeCal community. Today we're joined by internationally known nutrition and wellness expert, Terry Cochran. With almost 20 years of hands-on practice and in integrated healthcare, Terry specializes in natural and individualized solutions for complex and chronic health conditions. Terry has been able to bring the principles of her practice to a wider audience through her book, The Wildatarian Diet, Living as Nature Intended. And we'll be diving into that today. Terry, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me and talk to your audience. So first off, can you tell us a little bit about your background and your journey into nutritional counseling? I would love to. I would have never expected to be a disruptor in the world of personalized health, but sometimes life throws us a curveball and then we catch that curve and turn it into something beautiful. So in my specific journey, it was my son's health crisis that led me to a different path. I had had 20 on nearly 20 years in corporate America as an institutional risk manager and I managed billions of dollars of um, real estate assets for a large institution. And as my firstborn at the three-year well check, we were told that he would not be normal to expect brain seizures, that he wouldn't grow past five foot four, and he would not live a normal life. We had um, a lot of significant, at that time I didn't know, but food sensitivities, which were exacerbating life-threatening, daily life-threatening asthma, uh, inability to grow. He was not really speaking by the age of three. He was not walking really well. So we went down the allopathic route and I live here in the Metro DC area. And so we veiled ourselves of allergists and pediatricians and endocrinologists. And their solution was to give him more steroids and more drugs, which actually made him further depleted. And so at the age of five, this happened at the age of three. At the age of five, I decided that I would become the risk manager for his health. And I started down his healing path by doing a tremendous amount of research. At that time, it was before the age of the internet. He's getting ready to turn uh, 27 next week. So um, it's a long time ago, and we didn't have the resources at our fingertips as we do today to try to go out and uh, do some, our own research. So I piled on books in the library. I would I became a consummate observer of other children, a curious observer of other children to see how their health profiles were being shifted. And I found one child whose health profile from pre-K to the end of that year had really transformed. And that's where I met a, a functional medically trained doctor that started him down a different path. And she eventually became my mentor. So uh, he's the reason I do this work, and uh, thousands have been benefited by it almost 20 years later. Well, thank you for sharing yes. that, and I was so so happy to read how, how your son's thriving now. Thank you. Yes. And moving on to your, your book, so you've named the approach, your approach to healthy eating wildatarian. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what the wildatarian approach to diet and health is? I'd love to. So I made up the word wildatarian, and a wildatarian is someone who consumes primarily wild meat, shellfish, and fish, sustainably grown cheeses with the happy from the happy animals and low mycotoxic food. And so, whoops, this is falling out of my ear. In the wildatarian approach, we seek to match your genetic blueprint to your current state of health. And so what I love about the wildatarian diet and lifestyle is that it is truly one that seeks to match your genes, potentiality of your genes to you, and so the foods that really support that. And so we say there's not one healthy food for everyone, nor is there one healthy supplement for everyone. And we also know that genes are just our potentiality. It's how they're expressed. And so by looking at certain body talk signs, the symbol of body talk, which is, for example, if you burp after eating, you probably aren't digesting your protein. If you have trouble building muscle, that's another sign for protein malabsorption. If you have sulfur uh, smell when you eat asparagus in the toilet with urine, then that you might have trouble processing sulfur. If you've had a lot of um, yeast infections, gallstones, kidney stones, then you have trouble processing oxalates. And a lot of sulfur and oxalate foods are we've been touted have been touted as really healthy foods. Those are the foods of cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, killer kale, as I call it, spinach and almonds and black beans are oxalates. So these healthy foods have have gone from healthy to being disruptive because of the macroecology of 
the glyphosate, which has really, really become a huge disruptor in our own microbiome and our own way to manage and process these otherwise healthy foods. Okay, and as you as you know, our community are particularly concerned about bone health. Uh, are there any parts of the diet that you can highlight that are particularly helpful for this? Yes. So one of the things that we really speak to as well is that the wildatarian approach. The reason why I named it wildatarian is that the consumption of wild meats have much more bioavailability into their amino acid structure, and so. We know that what are the biggest proteins in the body? It's muscle, collagen, and hemoglobin. And in order to make that protein, we have to break down the protein into its essential amino acids. And the discovery of the fact that the crowding conditions of our domesticated animals are creating these indigestible proteins in their tissues, not allowing us to then break down these proteins because it's the, these amyloids, which are the truncated protein structures, that's their name, are not allowing us to robustly metabolize these proteins. So we are no longer able to then make that collagen structure, which is so important for bone function. We're not able to make that, those protein strands in our muscle. And calcium, it's not just about the calcium, it's our body's ability to process our vitamin D, it's stromium, it's boron, it's these minerals. And what the wild vegetarian diet seeks to understand is, what is your best fit? So, for example, if you're taking in a lot of calcium, but you have an oxalate metabolism issue, then these calcium oxalates, instead of building bone, they're making arthritic bone. And another one of the tenets of the wild vegetarian diet is how stress is really such a big impact. We know that cortisol will actually leach calcium from our bones. And so living as nature intended, which is the subtitle to this book, is to really manage the stress response and everything that we do and catching ourselves in intentional eating and not eating foods that are going to actually make us dysglycemic, especially protein is not just about the bones and the muscle fiber, but it's also how we manage glucose, glucose metabolism. Um, no, if we're not able to, uh, to break down protein to manage glucose, then we're going to become dysglycemic, meaning we're going to potentially have a hypoglycemic event and then we're going to become hyperglycemic. The hyperglycemia is because the body is now in response to what is a hypoglycemic event. It's going to push cortisol, that stress hormone, or epinephrine, a.k.a. adrenaline, that stress hormone. When we push that stress hormone, we're in a state of stress. We're going to leach that calcium from our bones. We're going to leak our gut. We're going to become fat malabsorbed. So the tenets of the wild vegetarian diet is really about how do we exercise knowledge and power and empowerment to illuminate the maximum potential within us. I work with some of the world's top athletes and help them get back into their best self. I've also taken individuals who have multiple sclerosis and are now bodybuilding champions. So their collagen matrix yeah. structure, their calcium, their bone structure, their neurological function has completely transformed. We match their genetic blueprint to their state of health and their body had miraculous transformation. So it sounds like it's more than an approach to eating. Uh, it's kind of a lifestyle, lifestyle approach. Absolutely. Because we are what we, th we become that which we think the thought creates the thing. And so our thinking has, and the, the beautiful work of Dr. Bruce Lipton, whom I'm a big fan of, and I had the opportunity to meet and work with, um, his biology of belief book, which is, I believe it's the encyclopedia of, of wisdom for how the thought creates the signal to the gene for expression against our favor or for our favor. We know that when we have thoughts of negative thinking patterns of um, scarcity or resentment or anger or um, fear. Now, those are, all, those are all natural emotions as part of the human construct, but when we have a sustained version of them, they actually can turn on our genetic expression against our favor and cause us to be less than ourselves. And if you have those calcium oxalate genes, the SUOX gene and the, the G, uh, the, I call it the gopher gene, which calcifies, we're going to be less able to process and build that calcium. We're going to leach it. And there are other, many other gene SNPs that, that speak to how we, how we have healthy bones and how we have healthy hemoglobin. Uh, because in our bone marrows where we make the osteoblasts, which are the cells that actually make bones. So um, 
And we also have the osteoclast, which is the breakdown of bones. So we really have to look to our blood to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do to make us have healthy bones. And our thinking is a really big piece of it. Wonderful. So you talk a lot about wild meats uh, in the book and e eating the right kind of meat. Can vegetarians and vegans also uh, follow this approach? Absolutely. I was just on the phone uh, with someone from California right before our, our uh, session, and she's a vegetarian. But she's having a lot of insulin and estrogen issues. She's having a lot of joint pain um, because she's eating all the right, wrong foods. So we did a genetic a nutrigenomic analysis on her. And what we found was she indeed had those genetic uh, potential uh, potentials to not be able to break down calcium. So what we did for her is we, we created this gene smart approach where instead of spinach, she'll be having bib lettuce. And instead of parsley, she'll be having cilantro. And instead of uh, killer kale, She'll be having, you know, robust romaine lettuce and then uh, none of the sulfur and the and the oxalate foods. Instead, she'll be focusing on eggplant and tomatoes and pumpkin and zucchini squash and then the beans that are low mycotoxin. So it's not turning on her estrogen uh, in, against her favor, which is not able to metabolize estrogen, because if we can't use estrogen, we're also going to be um, calcium impaired. So absolutely. We at, at the world of wild vegetarian, we say we're equal opportunity. You can be plant based. You can be sea based. You can be lamb based. You can be combo platter based. We we seek to match your genetic blueprint and your philosophical approach to life uh, to your genetic state of health. All right. And you also mentioned, uh, you know, if you don't have access to wild wild meats, there are some exceptions that could could be okay? Yes. Yeah, so Cornish game hen appears through empirical evidence here in the clinical outcomes, even though it's not technically wild, it can be it can be used. Chicken I call the dirty bird. That's the most studied of all the animals that show us that they carry the highest amyloid burden and we have the clinical outcomes that when my clients leave chicken and come back to chicken it has bad consequences. Um, but you can do lamb. Uh, you can do if you have a pasture-fed, pasture fed, pasture-finished beef that's been humanely raised and you know that its mother had also been humanely raised, then it's, uh, we call it, you know, the, you're, take, you're making a better choice. It's not the best choice, but it's a better choice. And of course, as we cut back into the world of now socializing, we're going back into restaurants and so forth. And so at restaurants, you may not have the exact choice, but I tell you, I travel. I have traveled monthly through these last 18 months. And I've always been able to navigate uh, a restaurant menu because sometimes I'll ask them, you can do fish and lamb in most um, restaurants or shellfish, which I love. So you go, you go to the sea and if you're vegetarian, you just navigate around, you know, the beans and the rice and the, and the, the bowls that have a lot of avocado is an amazing uh, substitute for meat, if you will, and the, and the right kind of beans. So absolutely, it can be navigate, navigated easily. Wonderful. And you talk quite a bit about meal planning in the book. Why, why is meal planning so important? Well, when we have a, a sustainable approach to how we look at food, we're in control. And we feel in the ease of what's, what's happening. So for example, I made, um, I have very long nights. So I made lamb with squash and yellow peppers and some mushrooms, ground lamb, which I'm ha I had today for lunch. And I'll have tomorrow for lunch because I've got uh, I've got late nights um, this evening so or this week. So I I say that when you plan, you're actually saving hours. And I've I've actually done some Facebook lives where I prep my meals for the week, and it may take me an hour, and I save seven hours down the road. I just look at the week ahead, and I I fall into this ease and flow with my food, and I'm not going to make those bad choices because I'm in control. I'm in control of how I've navigated my day. And I also, in my book, have these convertible meals where you can take one meal and convert it into another meal. Let's say we have, we made some red beans and rice and I'd made some ground bison the day before. Then on a really quick day, I can just, where I'm, I'm really running around, I can do some mozzarella and put in some chilies. And then I just put it in the microwave or put it over a stovetop. And in five minutes, you know, I've got this beautiful, like a fajita type uh, meal that I can put in either in a lettuce wrap or in a cassava wrap and I'm ready to go. And I say I can make or prep a meal in five. We can be wild in five. It doesn't take hours in the kitchen to really 
avail yourself of robust and really nutrient dense food that serves your genetic blueprint. Wonderful. And before you start cooking, you're you're buying your your ingredients, and you share some great tips for for checking food labels. Uh, what are some th- top things you think people should should look out for? Well, one of my sayings is, if you can't read it, don't eat it. <laughs> If you can't read the ingredients, if it doesn't say whole or 100%, um, then something is being refined in that package. If it's got numbers and letters that you can't pronounce, then that's not food. That's a chemical. Um, If you've got more than seven or eight ingredients in something, you've got more than what you need. (laughs) And you bargained for a lot less than what you're, you're asking for. And these toxins are really, really burdensome. Um, in the sense that they now have shown studies that when a baby is born, it is carrying over 750 toxins in its itty bitty body. That means even through the gestation period and what it was taking from its mom, it's already toxic. And so I just challenge everyone, especially the mother, I say longevity starts in the womb and we, we, we're fertility experts here and we seek to match the genetic blueprinting of both parents and the mother during pregnancy, though the mother to be during pregnancy really eats the genetic blueprint intersection of both parents. So you're not really supporting something that when the baby comes out, they're going to be allergic. And a uh, case in point, uh, I, I work with families. I start with one individual and then the the entire family ends up coming to see me. And one of my clients who'd had two boys prior to starting work with me, they both had anaphylaxis to their nuts, most nuts. And because little William, we tied his genetic blueprinting to both parents. He's like the little general. He is now three. He has zero allergies. He's been not sick. He's like, you know, he he could really, you know, uh, lead a war. (laughs) He's, He's just so robust. So, it really made a difference by oh, keeping him away from those foods in utero that would other that otherwise made his brothers uh, anaphylactically uh, sensitive. That's all. And you talk about green recommend, recommendations, uh, which I really liked in the book, because many of our community members are avoiding gluten, so they're choosing gluten free options. But you do warn against. Um, or recommend some things to look out for when choosing grains. Can you share? Yeah. So many of us are trading celiac for diabetes because a lot of the gluten-free options are really rich in corn. Corn is 90% of corn is genetically modified. Corn is not a food at all. Corn is a way, I call it a fire starter. It's, it's, it carries a lot of mycotoxins, which is a mold, which can actually dysregulate insulin. Molds have been proven to dysregulate insulin. So when we are eating corn and rice, We're trading that from one disease to another. And so I say be gluten-free 2.0. And that version of 2.0 is the gluten-free that matches your genetic blueprint and your current state of health. And so, for example, we like buckwheat, and I call it the buck not wheat because it's not wheat at all. It's a grain uh, that, excuse me, it's a seed that mimics grains, and it's also a complete protein. So millet is also a wonderful alternative. So buckwheat, millet, chia amaranth, quinoa, oats if you don't have um, an oxalate sensitivity. So staying away from that white rice, tapioca, guar gum, and corn, which has replaced gluten. And what's so interesting, and I think it's a little bit disingenuous on the manufacturer's part, is because it's labeled gluten-free, they're going to charge you three times as much, but their cost is less than the gluten itself. And so I I just think that that's really irresponsible and um, It's disingenuous and it's not giving you nutrient rich alternative at all. So be really mindful about gluten free and go to the gluten free 2.0 version of yourself. At In Wild Detarian, you talk about stress. So coming back to that point um, about how one's emotional state can affect digestion. uh, Do you have a few simple mindfulness tips for our members uh, that they can apply when preparing and eating a meal? Absolutely. Well, we know that stress is a fire starter for impaired digestion because when we're in a state of stress, we cannot make the hydrochloric acid necessary to break down protein. Plus, we're going to be leaking our gut with the uh, adrenaline and cortisol, making us fat malabsorbed. So I say that your relationship with food starts the moment you touch it in the grocery store because we impart energetic frequency to everything that surrounds us. And so 
Don't go to the grocery store angry or upset. Or if you are angry or upset, leave it at the front door of your grocery store and come in with an opportunity to really understand that you're you're about to make a purchase on something that's going to sustain you. You know, it's a, it's a miraculous transformation that sustains life. And so really I have a, I have a, a method that I've created called stop, drop and roll. And this is what the firefighters use to put out the fire, but I use it to put out our internal fire of stress management. And so I always ask to my clients to check in with themselves. Are they having, are they feeling expansive in their, in their way of thinking? Or are they feeling contractive? If you're having a contractive thought, that means that your body is actually contracting. It's actually lowering its immune system. It's stopping its digestive juices and it's pushing that stress hormone, which is going to leach calcium from our bones. So the first thing is, oh, I recognize this. I'm going to stop that thought. I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt the broadcast, if you will. The second thing is you have to drop it. And the way you drop it is you have to move. And this is through walking, through singing, through jogging, through even just movement, just, you know, moving your arms and just taking the power pose, which Harvard has shown that if you power pose for 90 seconds, you're actually reducing your cortisol levels, but movement, and that's, you have to drop that energy. And then you're rolling into a higher frequency thought. So after you stop and you drop, then you roll into what, what was something that made you feel joy? And it doesn't have to be, I went to Bali or I'm looking, you know, I'll never get to Bali. You know, did you see that bird in the morning? I run every morning and my little cardinals come to meet me. And, you know, when they greet me in the morning, that makes me really happy. Or I, I have a tree in front of my, my, I have an in-home gym and tree in front of my gym. And over the season, I've seen its little, its little leaves open up. And now we're in the middle of summer and they're beautifully open. And then That tree talks to me every morning in terms of what is it telling me? How is it changing day to day? So small things or just even, you know, thinking about a note that you got from someone or just having a a lovely thought. It doesn't have to be big. We can really flip our genetic expression in real time by our thoughts. And it's that simple. And it's been measured. It's that simple. So stop, drop, and roll. I like that. Easy to remember. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, so we here at Algae Cal were delighted to hear uh, in a previous interview uh, with you that you do recommend Algae Cal supplements um, in your practice to your clients. Uh, so what drew you to Algae Cal and how does Algae Cal align with your approach to restoring um, and maintaining good health? What I love about Algae Cal is that it's natural, right? You're not taking a chemical to help you build your bone. It has manganese, magnesium, vitamin D, and manganese is really important in in decreasing the histamine response. So one of the things that people don't understand is histamine. It's not just about a sniffle and a sneeze and an itch. It It could actually become an excitatory neurotransmitter that interrupts our body's ability to manage bone because when, again, in a state of stress... We're going to leach those bones. And so I love the, the comprehensive nature of it, the fact that you're bringing it from Mother Earth. And it's the absorbability is, is super key because you can, again, take in supplements. And if you're not absorbing them, your body's having to then process them. And the two organs that help detoxify and process are the kidney and the liver. And that's why when we're not processing calcium, we actually have calcium stones in our kidneys and our liver. Go figure, right? There are processing agents and we've got to be able to use, use what, we're, what we're taking in. And so, I mean, I've been recommending this for years and I have a lot of my clients taking it um, because of its efficacy, but it's also because I consider supplements to be a symphony. And if one ingredient is wrong in the, in the symphony of ingredients, it's going to have an impact on the rest on the rest of it. So I love the symphony that Algae Cal has created. It's synergistic. It's holistic. It really speaks to all the elements of what is an optimal way to manage the assimilation of what you're taking, not just I'm taking it, but how is it being assimilated? And because of the cofactors that are in there, it really, I really, I really endorse it. Awesome. And one final question for you here. So what kind of stamp are you wanting to make or leave in the health and wellness industry? So, for example, if you had a billboard uh, that millions of people would see quoting Terry Cochran, what would yes. it say? Uh, 
be gene smart in your approach to your lifestyle? And are you eating the right, wrong foods? Are you eating the right, wrong foods? Because so many of us think I'm going to have that kale smoothie and I'm going to match it with spinach and then I'm going to put blueberries in there. If you have an oxalate sensitivity, you're going to be in pain all day long. Those are healthy foods, but they're the wrong foods for you. The second thing is longevity starts in the womb. We have to think that early because as mothers, mothers to be, it's we've, we've made a decision to be in charge of this little human in creation. And so it could be really easy about just knowing what you're putting into your body, how you can affect that growing body. And I work with so many children that have not had that benefit. And I've also worked with children that have had that benefit. And now over almost 20 years in practice, their lives have changed dramatically as a result of that approach. And the second thing is always be gene smart. We have to, we have the availability to access that information now. And over the thousands and thousands of clients that I've seen, we know that it's not just about getting healthy, but it's about staying healthy. And when we're gene smart, we're actually empowered to know, is this right for me? And is this right for me at this point in my life? Because although our genes won't change in our life, the expression of them will. Beautiful. So thank you so much for, for joining us today, Terry. It's been lovely chatting with you. Uh, just before we go, uh, if our community would like to learn more about you uh, and your approach to health, uh, where can they go to find you? Well, we believe that information is empowering. So at terrycocker.com, we have, uh, we're always putting out information, uh, blogs monthly, my social media on Instagram. We have an Ask the Expert series. We're there every other week and we're there very frequently, regularly, as a matter of fact, always imparting information. Of course, the Wildetarian Diet, Living as Nature Intended, you can buy that on Amazon. And just connecting with me on the multiple uh, arenas that I, I, I share with various audiences. So if you Google Terry Cochran on YouTube, you'll find lots, lots about me. So um, I'm really, I'm really um, honored to be able to represent a pioneering form of um, maximizing the human potential. Wonderful. And we'll, we'll share all those, those links uh, with this, with this interview. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Terry. My pleasure. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.